This is an off-wheel disclosure news update. Welcome to Off-World Disclosure News Update. On Friday, August 14th, we premiered Episode 1 of our in-depth UFO news report. And coincidentally, on the same day, the Department of Defense, a few hours afterwards, released an announcement stating that Deputy Secretary of Defense David L. Norquist has approved the establishment of an Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. Now, while this is seen by some to be a major step forward in the path towards official disclosure, it hardly made a blip in the mainstream news media. Furthermore, the wording in the announcement and indeed a lot of the statements, releases, and announcements over the last few months, while appearing to manifest as an official stamp of confirmation on the fact that there are sophisticated and intelligently controlled unknown craft and shooted into U.S. airspace, seems instead to show a big vacuum in communications between differing branches of the military and government. For while the Pentagon has admitted that it has further video evidence of these objects, they are remaining classified under the seal of national security for now. In the latest episode of the show, Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation, produced by A&E for the History Channel, which aired on Saturday the 15th, XA tip official Luis Elizondo, one of the research team headed by Blink-182 singer-songwriter Tom DeLonge, comes to the conclusion that there must exist a cover-up of information in regards to the status and history of UAPs by the Air Force, and also remarked on the apparent silence of the Air Force on the topic given that all information comes out so far is sourced from the U.S. Navy via the Department of Defense. It was further postulated that the Air Force may have been testing some advanced new technology in the Tic Tac craft by sending them up against the Nimitz strike group. This cover-up does appear to have some cracks in it, however. If we look at some of the remarks by former Senator Harry Reid in a July New York Times article, he stated that, quote, after looking into this, I came to the conclusion that there were reports, some were substantive and some not so substantive, that there were actual materials that the government and private sector had in their possession. At this point, it is surely worth to ask who in the private sector has such things in their possession, and which we can only assume it must be one or more top-level defense contractors. Furthermore, related to this, the aerospace defense contractor and astrophysicist Eric Davis said that after he examined certain materials, he came to the shocking conclusion that, quote, we couldn't make such materials ourselves. Davis went on to say that he had briefed a DOD agency as recently as March about retrieving materials from off-world vehicles not made on this earth so we can presume it was one of these departments he gave a briefing to. And given his aerospace background, maybe it is safe to assume the briefing was given to the Air Force. However, we cannot depend on conjecture. From all of this, we can draw some obvious conclusions. One of the main conclusions being that the compartmentalization of information between the defense departments and also within the actual departments themselves is a bottleneck for the flow of disclosure information. By face value, it very much appears that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. It is prudent to ask if the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force will be able to act as a bridge for information to flow between departments and private sector contract projects to eventually be declassified and released to the public. Mystical Mind Tribe will stay focused on only the facts and bring you the latest reports on developments as they occur. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date and click on the bell to get notifications. In other news, the National UFO Reporting Center announced that it has received 1,871 UFO reports filed from the state of Georgia so far in 2020, which is an unusually high amount of reported sightings. Not far behind is Virginia, with 1,846 reports so far, which again, compared to previous years, is a higher number. So what's going on in Georgia and Virginia that has those states buzzing with UFOs? More about that in the next episode of Off-World Disclosure Report. According to the SatelliteInternet.com, the states with the greater number of sightings in descending order are Idaho, Montana, New Hampshire, Maine, and then New Mexico. Thank you for tuning in for this update. Please help support our efforts by spreading and sharing the links to others who are interested in this mind-blowing topic. We'll see you next time. 
click on the bell notifications as we will also be posting breaking news items and related videos often. If you enjoyed the music, you can listen to the entire 30 minute track which is on our channel called First Contact. If you would like to submit video footage or have an interesting case you would like highlighted, please contact us via the email in our notification section. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies.